You are not in control. You ever notice how in social pressure situations, like for example, meeting someone new or an interview, we very often second guess what we're about to say before we say it. And then this causes like a cascading series of errors, which actually sinks the whole interaction. So what's going on is your attempts to control are actually putting you out of control. So in this video, I explain this phenomenon to a mentoring student, and I talk about how we can give up that predictive control to gain in-process control and stop sabotaging all of your interactions. One thing we see time and time again is students can come up, they can recite the lines, but they just can't hold attention. They get in their head, it gets too logical, it fizzles out. What you're describing is very, very common. This is what I hear on boot camp. These questions I ask you are the same questions that I ask on boot camp at the very beginning. And um, you know, I say, what, what do you, where are your sticking points? And guys will always say, I can go up, I can talk, I can get, you know, I can engage in conversation, but then it just kind of fizzles out and goes nowhere. Or I get, you know, they give me a fo an unenthusiastic phone number, probably because they're polite, and then that goes nowhere. So we want to start to look at how to, in to get the flip side of the coin. You got that horizontal plot development. But now we want to learn how to create a vertical vibe expansion, right? Creating a feeling that's compelling, a feeling that's interesting, a feeling that's shocking, a feeling that's amusing, a feeling that's mysterious, a feeling that's hilarious, something that is going to set you apart in her mind and, make, and crack through the reticular activation system where you become emotionally relevant. Otherwise, you're just another one of these sad sack fucking losers who's coming up a non-entity, a piece of furniture, who comes up, asks her a couple dumb questions, get asks for a phone number, and she literally forgets 20 seconds after you're gone. So this is what we're, this is the aim of this program, is to open and sustain charismatic communication, open and sustain that charismatic vibe development with increasing consistency. So you're gonna be able to do that at a moment's notice, and again, get them to pay attention and remember and again, snap to, and so you become emotionally relevant in their world. So they actually pay attention. And again, it can, it can seem weird, to, especially to guys who are very focused or, or accustomed to working on technique, because very often with vibe, it doesn't even seem like it's going anywhere. It just seems like you're, you're reveling in this sort of narrative stasis. It's, it's this, yeah, there's this good feeling, but where's it going? So again, vibe without plot, vibe without technique is useless. Technique without vibe, is useless. So the aim of this program, you've probably read about enough about technique. Technique, in my opinion, is the easier thing to wrap your head around because technique is logical, right? Technique makes sense. There's a structure. Okay, I go from A to B to C. You know, every interaction is obviously different and there's gonna be different, you know, branching paths along the way, but that's the general path I wanna go down. Like, I, if this, then that, okay, that makes sense. But how do I generate a good feeling? Now, the problem with generating good feeling there's a couple problems. Number one, we're so accustomed to logic-based thinking, rationality, science, empiricism. Our entire educational system is focused on solving problems through rote, solution, rote patterns and solutions, right? Intuition, intuitive thought, feeling, that's been largely discredited in our society, in our educational system, due to you know, the, the massive success of empiricism and rationalization, rationalism. But rationalism isn't always good, as we see from that term rationalization, which is a pejorative term that we use to describe faulty logic, bad guesses, bad judgment, stupid shit that we do internally. And it's a, it's a defense mechanism that, that's brought on largely by negative social conditioning. So in this program, over these eight weeks, what we're gonna start to do a lot of these exercises that Matt's, Matt was talking about a moment ago, they're designed to push energy through these various modes that you're probably familiar with now, um, you know, having gone through the first week of the program or so. And, it, and it, as you push energy through those modes, you're putting pressure on the control patterns. You're putting pressure on the interference patterns, on those patterns where you feel shut down. You can't think of things to say. You're judging yourself. You're attempting to judge intuitive impulses in the moment. You're, you're attempting to have that predictive control of what you're saying. However, if you want to, again, these attempts to, to control really just put you out of control because now 
in the interaction, which is a dynamic thing that's living and moving in time, if you're trying to attain predictive control over what you say, over how it goes, now you're on the back foot. That's taking energy away from the present moment. So we want to start to look at the intellect and how it's affecting the flow of energy from inwards to outwards. We want to start to look at uh, you know, ways that we can have the intellect, train the intellect to spend more time in useful activity and be present and not thinking about what you just said two seconds ago, what worrying about what you might say two seconds from now, because then you're on the back foot. And this can cause a cascading series of errors where you get increasingly more stifled and then what you describe happens. It's like, okay, this is not going anywhere, fizzles out, gone. So we're going to examine the intellect. We're going to examine... Uh, you know, a variety of other things. Obviously, the outer communicators, including the face, the voice, the body. Uh, you know, you know that's, that's the start, right? We work from an outside-in approach. And we're going to be working with these energies directly. So by putting pressure on these control patterns, by ask, like, for example, with facial flex or vocal flex, you're never going to do those things in actual interactions, right? You're never... And I think it's always important, and for those on the call, you're like, here he goes again, explaining the training rationale, but I think it's important, especially for a new guy and even for the people here to kind of reiterate that why we do these exercises. Because if you don't understand the training rationale, they can seem like, okay, it's, it's fun or whatever, but it's like, it's just arbitrary. Why the fuck am I doing? Oh, I made my little faces today on the Jeffy call. <laughs> wow, my face is, oh, my fa- funny FaceTime. I'm Jim Carrey. It's like, no, <laughs> the, tra- <laughs> the training rationale is you got to understand these control patterns are very, in most cases, below your awareness level. You're not even, all you know is something's wrong. Like right now, you're probably like, when I try to, when I try to go up and talk, I feel more stifled than I would with a close friend. Why? I don't know. I don't know. I just know what happens. Because again, you've held these, these choices as necessary. These the stif, you know, this, the, the, these tensions, you've held them to be necessary and useful for so long, probably since childhood, that now you don't even notice them. You just think that's how I am. So much as if you were to take like OxyContin or something, pain would disappear that you didn't even know you had. So what we're doing with with these exercises, again, we're pushing energy in a a high level, again, something you would never do in actual interactions, to put pressure on those patterns, cause the repression to become more exaggerated and through exaggeration, make them uh, observable to you. And once you become aware of them, then we can start the process of releasing those tensions and replacing their manifestations in your life, in your communication. So they're no longer default necessities, but rather they simply become choices on your field of choice potential. And by doing so, you're transforming what were formerly these tension entanglements into powerful choices. You can be deadpan from a place of power. You can be kind of, kind of monotone, from a place of power. You can be low energy from a place of power if it's a choice that you're making as opposed to, oh, I I have no other choice, right? Because they can sense, uh, again, by transforming default necessities and choices, uh, and again, you guys, pardon me for, he's he's new, so I'm going over this again. You know, for for example, let's say that I'm sitting next to a a top athlete, right? I'm sitting next to Kawhi Leonard or, 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 or Kobe Bryant. Well, I couldn't because he's dead. But I'm, I'm sitting next to you know LeBron James or something. It, it, we can both be in a, in a state of rest, but my state of rest is not going to be as powerful as LeBron's state of rest because LeBron has a greater field of kinesthetic choice surrounding his state of rest. So even from a state of repose, he's going to seem more powerful in that state of repose than I am in the state of repose because he has more choices around it. Now, again, final thing here, and then we'll move on. Understand that these exercises, like I said, they're not intended to be used in actual interaction, but they will benefit your ability. They will enhance your ability to perform in actual interactions. Much in this, my favorite analogy, much in the same way that a football player might, you know, lift weights or he might like run a grid or run through tires on a field. He's not going to do either of those things in an actual Monday night football game. However, both of those things are going to enhance his ability to perform in the game. So it's important to discern between exercise and performance, okay? Here, we are not attempting to attain product performance standards of excellence. So when you do, and, and again, this is something that a lot of the guys here struggle with. They're, they, they, get, they beat themselves up if, oh, I did the exercise wrong. 
It's like, there is no exercise. You can't do the exercise wrong. You can improve, you can get better at it, right? But the only useful exercise is one that you can't do successfully at first. Otherwise, it's not gonna, it's not gonna be pushing you. Because remember, all learning is movement into the unknown. All growth is movement into the unknown. Out of all the teachers that I've seen, um, and this isn't bullshit, Jeff's was the only one that was actually concrete, tangible, and to the point. The others had a lot of like inner game material that was subjective and people perhaps couldn't relate to, but everyone can actually relate to the tangible points that I saw today. Even me, I could relate. Um, so I actually, I learned something, which is very rare. Oh